to you as we celebrate emancipation. Praise God. Thank the Lord that we truly are emancipated in Jesus Christ. Chains have been broken and the feathers have been broken. Indeed, we have been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Welcome every one of you today to our live, this very special service. We are also observing the Lord's table in a little bit. And I trust that you are ready for that and you got your emblems. And so if not, uh, uh, just go get it right now, okay? Go get that um, go get that bread and get that juice. And we'll be partaking of the Lord's table momentarily. Also, I want to ask you to send in those prayer requests. Be sure to send it in. Remember, if you do not ask, then you will not receive. So send in those prayer requests right now and we'll be sure to pray for you. And we're going to believe God together with you that your prayers would be answered, that God will grant you your request, the desires of your heart as you faithfully serve Him. Today I believe as you send in those prayer requests that deliverance is going to come. I believe that you're going to have a breakthrough today. I believe that you're going to have heaven's touch. All right. So right now you just uh, send in the prayer request even while I'm sharing the message. Send that in. And you also want to send a comment. It's highly appreciated. A word of encouragement. We appreciate that. Just giving a shout out to a few of our viewers today and Kavita. Uh, Rapison Sophia, God bless you and your family. We trust that you have had a, a good week and uh, Kishan is doing well, Josh is doing well too. We're shouting out to Brother Dwayne Thomas, God bless you my friend. And also to Brother Neil Siram and his family, morning to you. And Laura Jairam Maraj, God bless you my sister, know that you always tuned in. And you're always locked in. And to everyone that is doing our live right now, praise God, whether you are in the country, whether you are outside of the country, God bless you. Share this live right now with somebody, okay? I know that they're going to be tremendously blessed by the remainder of this service. A powerful word is coming to you um, today. So get ready, get ready for it. Now, as we are going to partake of the Lord's table, here are a few scriptures that I want to uh, read to you about the Lord's table. In Matthew chapter 26, uh, I'm reading from verse 26. Uh, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed and break it and gave to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had summoned him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. What can wash away my sin? Because I just read this song again. So let's just sing a stanza as we're getting ready to party on the others. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me cool again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Blessed table. 
for all that it represents uh, the sufferings of our Lord Jesus, the crucifixion, but also the great resurrection and uh, the second coming of Christ. Uh, Oh, the Lord's table reminds us of the essential doctrines of the Christian faith and we celebrate it with praise and glory today. And I pray, dear Father, that you would wash us where we have come short and we do ask forgiveness, dear Father, and a fresh cleansing. And may the blessings of the book be upon us as we partake. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all partake of the bread. many blessings upon you just reminding you of what the word of God tells us and when you sow sparingly you will reap sparingly but if you sow bountifully you shall reap bountifully praise the Lord and when you bring the tithe into the storehouse God will open the windows of heaven and pour a blessing there will be no room to contain that blessing but we give up not grudgingly we give cheerfully because God loveth a cheerful giver. As I hold my tithe and offering, and as you hold yours in your hand as well, too, praise the name of the Lord. And those that have already said theirs, God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we are thankful and we are grateful for this opportunity to worship the Lord further in the giving of the tithe and the offering. May you continue to bless and provide for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Today I invite you to turn with me to the New Testament as we're reading the book of Colossians chapter 1, 12 through verses 14. Colossians chapter 1, 12 through verses 14. Praise the Lord. When you find it, if you want to stand at home, that's fine. All right, we always do that at church here when we gather together. We do that because of the honor and the tribute that we pay to the word of the living God. Amen. Verses 12. Given thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Verses 13. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verses 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. You will notice that I have changed my text for today. We have been in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 for a few months well now. And we have been closing. Uh, on our last point about the power of praise and I just have one more message on the power of praise but because today we are celebrating Emancipation Day in our country I said I must bring a word on that particular subject just for this morning so I am speaking to you on the subject today Emancipation through a cross not through a code alright Father, we thank you for this message that we're about to hear about true emancipation. Amen. Praise God. Not just being emancipated from a cord, their Father, but from the cross, which will make the difference now in our lives and will make the difference in eternity. In fact, the only difference, praise God, that emancipation will truly make in this world and this country one that comes by the cross and by the cross of Jesus Christ only. 
Thank you for blessing the soul in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, you can be seated now if you have been standing. God bless you. God bless you. Now, I just want to give you, before I get into this word today, I want to give you some information. Praise God. Amen. Out of our country's history as well. So, as you may know, that emancipation day marks the end of slavery in the British Empire. It is now and has been a public holiday in Trinidad and Tobago celebrated on the August 1st. So Emancipation Day has been celebrated in, in TNT since 1985 when it first became the first country, and this is impressive, the first country in the world to actually declare a national holiday to commemorate the abolition of slavery. Emancipation Day replaced, as you know, Columbus Discovery Day. I remember that change, which marked the arrival of Christopher Columbus on Trinidad, July 31st, 1498. Now, the British, like other colonial powers, had allowed the widespread practice of slavery to take place during the time of the expansion of the New World. In 1772, the ruling, however, in the case of Somerset versus Stuart, determined that slavery was unsupported by the common law in England and Wales. While the ruling was not clear on the situation in other parts of the empire, this case was seen as a turning point in the change towards emancipation. Slavery was finally abolished throughout the British Empire by the Slavery Abolition Act in 1833, which came into effect August 1st, 1834. So celebrations to mark Emancipation took place in Trinidad and Tobago in the 19th and early 20th centuries. So in 1939, the Legislative Council replaced Emancipation Day activities with Discovery Day, honoring Christopher Columbus and his journey to the New World. In the 1970s, however, there was a push to replace Discovery Day with Emancipation Day. So in 1984, the 150th anniversary of Emancipation, the Trinidad and Tobago government declared that August 1st would be made a public holiday from that following year. Praise God. And so since that time, it's been a public holiday and it has been celebrated in our country, Emancipation Day. Now, I want you to take note of what I said that we would be sharing today, emancipation, not through a code, but through a cross. Now, according to the Webster's Dictionary, what is a code? What really is a code? And so, it says in the dictionary, it is a systematic statement of body and law. It is a system of principles or rules. And as I thought of that, I, my mind went back to the Old Testament where we had also a code. We had some rules. We had civic rules, ceremonial rules that governed the nation of Israel. We had the law of Moses. But folks, even though the law of Moses was revered and the law of Moses was sought after, the law of Moses was placed on the forefront of Israel. They taught it to, to their children, to their grandchildren, and to the future generations. Yes, it was revered. That law that was handed down on Mount Sinai and written with the finger of God and together with the Ten Commandments of there are dozens and dozens of other laws that was handed down to Israel. The thing about the code, the thing about the law, folks, that is different to grace in Jesus Christ, 
is what the law of Moses could not do. What the code could not do. For 4,000 years, what the law could not do, Christ came in and through the cross of Jesus Christ, man could be truly liberated and set free from sin. Praise God. Now, here also is a legal definition of emancipate. To emancipate, and this is important in our studies today, to emancipate means to free from restraint. Take a note of that. I know that truth is saying to me this morning, Pastor, I've been viewing the online and so forth, and I've been taking notes. God bless your sister. Continue to do that. You are a diligent student of the word. You will learn and you will grow. And so it means uh, to, to be free from restraint. It means to be free from control or the power of another. It means ultimately emancipated to be free from a bondage. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is emancipation. To be free from bondage. So you see the law. The law of Moses. The code of the Old Testament. Was powerless to free mankind from the power of sin. And the power of Satan. And the power of death. It reigned. Sin reigned throughout the Old Testament. Folks. And all that the sacrifices did in the Old Testament. The sacrificing of the of bulls and goat and sheep and so on. The blood was shed from these animals. There were lots of sacrifices that were made. It did not at all remove sin. It never removed a single sin. Sin remained. Sin continued to reign and there would have been death that would follow. But folks, what happened through the sacrifices, it did not remove sin, it simply just covered sin. Waiting now on the day of grace. Waiting on the cross of Jesus Christ. No wonder why I just sang while we were about to receive the emblems. What can wash away my sin? It's not a code, folks. What can wash away my sin? It's not the law. It's not the Ten Commandments. Neither all the laws that were handed down to Israel. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that blood was shed on the cross of Calvary. So salvation is not through a law. Salvation is through the cross, through the blood, through the sacrifice of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Now I want to share with you some verses of scripture that would reinstate what I'm saying here today. Galatians chapter 3, beginning from verses 1. And listen carefully, so that you will understand the power of the cross. You will understand true emancipation. What true emancipation is all about. But that no man is justified. Notice what the scripture says. No man, not a single man, not this preacher, not the one that sits in the pew, nobody in the whole world. It could be how much, how they can be religious from birth. They can be adhering to the law of Moses and all these things. The Bible says here that no man is justified by the law. A code cannot justify you. To justify means to be declared righteous, to be declared holy. Yes, to justify. Folks, no law can bring about justification. You know, there's people today that still are observing um, these laws, thinking that it will bring about salvation. But hear what the Word of God says very clearly. And I read it to you again. For all those that think that salvation comes through the Ten Commandments uh, and keeping the law, you have been misled and misguided, folks. Uh, the Bible tells us very clearly that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Notice verses 13 of the same chapter. Christ 
hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. The law bore a curse because it was powerless to save him. The purpose of the law was only to show that man was helpless. The purpose of the law to show was to show that man was a helpless sinner. The purpose of the law to sh was to show that man cannot save himself. Let's read on and you will see what I am saying. Look at what it says. Cursed, for we are redeemed, he has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, being made a curse for us. Jesus Christ took the curse of the law. Yes, he was made a curse for us because cursed is everyone that hanging upon a tree. This tree speaks about the cross of Jesus Christ. He took the curse of the law upon himself. Verses 24, follow with me. Same chapter, verses 24. What is the purpose and what was the ultimate purpose of the law of Moses and the laws of the Old Testament? Notice what it says. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us, underline that, highlight that in your Bible, folks. The law was a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. The purpose of the law was to show you that now you are a sinner, you cannot save yourself, and you needed a savior. So the law was showing you, listen. That you need someone to deliver you from this curse of sin and death. And Jesus became that curse for us as he hung on the tree. And the verse close up by saying that we might be justified by faith. So justification cannot happen under the law. It never did. No one was justified by the law. No, we are only justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Verses 25 of chapter 3 as well. But after that faith is come, notice after faith is come, not after the law, but after faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Remember, the, the, the law was the schoolmaster. So because faith has come, the cross has come, the Christ has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. No longer under the law of sin and of death. Verses 26 says, For, for if our children of God, how? By the law? By the Ten Commandments? No. The Bible is clear that we are children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So what is the ultimate message that I'm sharing with you today? It is the message of the cross. Not a code, not the law. It cannot save, but of the cross. Folks, the law did not de defeat Satan. The law did not defeat sin's penalty, which had to be paid or else be death. What defeated folks, what defeated sin and death, not the law, but my Jesus, hallelujah, on the cross, amen. He paid the ultimate price of sin. By his blood, you are redeemed. By his blood, you are set free, praise God. So, if you are a believer in Christ, let me tell you something. Who truly is emancipated in this world today? We are celebrating emancipation, but I am taking it to another level today. I am taking it, folks, to a spiritual level. I am taking it to a higher level, glory to God. I'm talking about more, much more than being emancipated from this, this slavery that existed in those times. I'm talking about more than being emancipated from someone that owned you and worked you in their, in their, their fields as a common slave. I'm talking about something more serious, uh, folks. Uh, glory to God. I'm talking about true emancipation. True emancipation comes uh, only through faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, so we are celebrating emancipation here today. But our country needs to know, folks, um, 
that true emancipation only comes um, when you know Christ, when you have received Jesus, when you are washed in the blood of the Lamb, you can truly celebrate emancipation day. Hallelujah. You are truly emancipated. Glory to God. The story, and this is history, in, on July 31st, 1838, on the island of Jamaica, a man by the name of William Nibs. He gathered 10,000 slaves for a great praise gathering. They were celebrating the new Emancipation Proclamation Act that would abolish slavery on the island of Jamaica. They had built an immense coffin and in it they had placed the whips, the branding iron that they were branded with, the chains that they were chained with, the feathers of, of all kind, and even the slave garments, and all the things that represented the terrible slavery system that was now coming to an end uh, and with such welcome. That is why 10,000 they were celebrating. And at the first uh, stroke of the midnight bell, Nibs shouted out, the monster is dying. And at each stroke of the bell that followed, this cry was repeated. The great crowd began to join in the cry. And at the twelve stroke, 10,000 voices cried out, the monster is dead. The monster is dead. Let us bury him. Then they screwed the coffin lid down, loaded it into a huge grave and covered it up. That night, Every heart rejoiced, a thousand voices grew hoarse, shouting and crying with joy. Once they were in bondage to slavery, but now they were free. But there is another side of the story, I must say, a tragic side of the story, what happened in Jamaica. While men rejoiced in their new liberty and freedom, there were some slaves that lived in remote areas of the island. They did not know that they were legally and had been legally set free. And because of this lack of knowledge, many years after the Emancipation Proclamation had been made a law in Jamaica, they continued to serve their slave masters. And their former masters successfully kept the news from them as long as they could. But folks, the irony of the story is that they had been legally declared free persons. They were free to leave their slave masters. They were free to leave the plantations. They were free to leave their sh the, the shackles and the chains that they were bound in. But unfortunately, they remained chained and they remained shackled and they served as slaves because why? It is because of a lack of knowledge. They did not know that they were emancipated. They, they were not aware of the proclamation that was made. And because of that ignorance, it kept them in bondage. You say that is sad. But it is even sadder today that uh, we hear a story of something like that uh, happening. We would be shocked. We would be appalled. We would be even sympathetic in a very angry way to hear of such a thing that is happening. But the truth is today, I say, it is happening today in our day and age. It is happening today because Jesus Christ through his victory on the cross over sin and over death, he has issued an emancipation of proclamation of liberty and freedom to everyone upon planet earth that has been chained and shackled by the power of sin and the power of death and the power of vices and the power of drugs and the power of evil, the power of sin, the power of wickedness, the power of lies, the power of pride. Yes, Jesus on the death of the cross issued an emancipation proclamation that all sinners can go free, praise God, finally from the hands of the same master, the devil himself. 
servant. They can be set free, glory to God. They can be as free men. Isn't this what John chapter 1 and verses, uh, chapter 8 rather, and verses 32 says? Uh, it says, uh, and this, if you know the truth, uh, the truth uh, shall set you free. Amen. If uh, you know the truth, uh, the truth shall set you free. And who is the truth? Uh, John 14 verses 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, uh, and I am the life. Uh, the only thing that will set sinners free today, it is not the law. It is not living a good life, folks. Uh, the only thing that can set sinners today, it is the cross uh, in which Jesus Christ died and his blood uh, that was shed uh, upon the cross. Uh, why are you still in bondage, my friend, today? Why are you still chained uh, to the old slave master, to the old devil? Why are you still chained uh, with habits? Uh, there are some people that can't shake those habits out. Uh, they are still bound by habits um, of immorality, fornication, adultery. They are bound by habits of lie. Some people lie so much that you don't know when they're telling the truth. Uh, oh, I tell you, they need uh, deliverance, folks. Uh, why are you still bound uh, by these chains? Uh, why are you still bound by alcohol? Uh, when Jesus uh, can set the free glory of God, when emancipation proclamation has been made, all sinners uh, can go free. Why are you still bound by the cigarette? Why are you still bound by the weed? Why are you still bound by the coke? Why are you still bound by the lust? Why are you still bound by envy? Why are you still bound by maliciousness? Why are you still bound by false religion? When Jesus Christ has declared that you are free. Hallelujah. You are free in Christ. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The message of the cross is this. Satan has been defeated. That is the clear message. The cross, Jesus said, I will lift it up. I will draw all men on to me. Amen. The world today knows about the cross. Wherever you go, you see crosses. What does it symbolize? Yes, the true symbol of the cross is that sin's penalty has been paid. The true symbol of the cross is that you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The true symbol of the cross is we are no longer under the slave master of sin. We no longer have to surrender to sin. No longer does sin has dominion over you. This is what the cross symbolizes. You are no longer controlled by Satan. Now you belong to a new master. Praise God. Not Satan, but now you belong to Jesus Christ. Praise God. And he said, take my yoke upon uh, me and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart. Come unto me, all ye Matthew 11 28. Come unto me, all ye that heavy labor and labor, and I will give you rest. Praise God. You see, the slave masters of a long time they put the burdens on you, they put the shackles on you, they put the weight on you. But you see, Jesus, our new master, he don't put the burden. He said in Psalm 55 and 22, he says, you cast your burden upon me, hallelujah, and I will sustain you, glory to God. He says, yes, amen, because I came to you, and both Peter 5, 7, casting your care upon him, for he cared for you. That's the difference with being a servant of Jesus and being a servant of sin. Sin puts the burden on you. It puts the pain on you. It puts the hammer on you. I tell you, sin destroys you. But Jesus comes and says, I will take your burden. You don't have to carry those burdens anymore. I am your burden bearer. That's the difference with Christ and with Satan. With Christ and sin and the world. Glory to God. He takes your burden. You no longer have to carry your burdens anymore. He will carry them for you. What are your burdens today? What are your sorrows today? What are your problems today? What are your needs today? Jesus is waiting to take it. Praise God. Some of you are telling me you have to hold on to it. And 
that you are not getting better. You are getting weaker and you're getting bowed down. The burdens are, are too much for you. It's becoming greater. Every day is becoming heavier and heavier. Those burdens are. And the Lord has opened up his arms and said, listen, if you give me those burdens, if you give me those packages, if you give me those problems, if you pray, glory to God, I will take your burdens. I will take the heavy weight off your shoulder, off your heart. Praise God. You give me your sicknesses uh, because I am the Lord that healed thee. Praise God. Why are you keeping them? Turn it over to Jesus. He is your healer. Praise God. That is the message of the cross. We no longer have to be controlled by sin and Satan. We belong to Jesus Christ now. Hallelujah. And we can praise God. In closing, um, I love the words uh, of this song, No Longer a Slave. And it begins by, you unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies to all my fears of God. I'm no longer, the chorus says, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Let's just try and sing this uh, glory to God before we go to God in prayer. And experience even through this song, not only through the word, uh, but through the songs, uh, you can experience uh, freedom, amen, from sin, death, and even fear. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with of deliverance from my enemies the Lord my fears a God for us and no longer sleep to fear I am a child
of the law which could never save but I thank you for the cross that brought grace to mankind and I thank you dear father it is faith in Christ that truly emancipates glory to God hallelujah amen it is not the law of man that emancipates it is the grace of our Savior Jesus father by faith I accept the atoning work of Christ on the cross of Calvary and redemption through the blood of Christ. I repent of my sin and I now turn over my life to Jesus Christ. I receive Christ as my Savior and from today onwards I will serve Him until I see Him face to face. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Folks, I tell you, you can celebrate today through emancipation. Amen. Not only today, you celebrate it all. And you celebrate it the whole week. And you will celebrate it the rest of your life. You don't have to wait on the first of August anymore to celebrate emancipation day. Because for every day, for a believer in Jesus Christ, it is emancipation day. Glory to God. I believe in Christ is emancipated not one day a day, but I believe in Christ is emancipated 365 days in a year and for all eternity, glory to God. So church, you celebrate and continue to celebrate that the Son has set you free. Amen. I want to receive this morning the comments and the prayer requests that have come in. God bless you and you will honor your faith right now. Get ready for a miracle. Get ready for your prayers to be answered. And so first of all, so Lena Mirage wants prayer. Pray for her family. Good health and strength, prosperity, guidance, protection, and to cancel the plan of the enemy. Father, we cannot pray enough. Men are always to pray and not to fail. The devil, he had no shame. He been licked, he been beaten, but still he comes again. But we know his fate is sealed up. And it cannot be changed. One day he will be thrown into the eternal lake of fire. Never to tempt man. Anymore at all, our adversary will completely be destroyed in the eternal lake of fire. But Father, I pray for our sister and family that you will continue to protect them and keep them from the onslaughts of the enemy that still abound their father. Give them victory completely. In the name of the Lord, no weapon that has come against them will prosper. Every plan that people might be planning, and anybody might be planning, their Lord, to bring it down, to hurt them, will be of none and void, of no effect in Jesus' name. And they will grow in your grace and in your knowledge. Father, we also lift up Sister Lisa Emeritus. And she wants prayer for herself. Dear Lord, I have an idea of what is happening. Lord, to her, I pray for physical healing right now. In Jesus' name, I pray specifically for the, the lungs in the name of the Lord. I pray for healing. There is nothing beyond your hands and your scope. You are your mighty God. And you said, I am the Lord that healed thee. Sister, you receive your healing. Be made whole in Jesus' name. Father, I lift up Kavita. And her mom to the tantrum as she has to to do an angiogram this week. I, I pray that you'll be with all dear Lord and everything will go well. And even now upon her body, I pray God for your healing and their power. You said a long life. And I want Sister Kavita, you pray that for mom if she's listening and she's listening a little bit today. Amen. I want you to turn to Psalm 91 and verse 16. Put your finger on that. Put a highlight on that and say that every day, every day, with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. Thank you, Father. We lift up Leah Marie, dear Lord, praying for our unsafe family members today in Jesus' name and for everyone who has access to the one says, Believe on Jesus, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. I claim also that financial blessing you said in Philippians 4 19, my God shall supply my every day. Thank you for doing for my sister. I lift up the Lord Sister of Arena, dear Lord, and wanting prayer for family, for health and protection. Feeling a little bit um, anxious about the vaccination. I know, Lord, that uh, this COVID has brought on 
a lot, a lot of problems in the world today. And one of them has been fear, fear of the future. But in Christ, we need not to fear. Because we know to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Father, with the vaccine or without the vaccine, we are in your hands. Amen. Glory to God. Our ultimate trust is in you. You said very clearly in Psalm 148 and verses 3. Do not put your confidence in princes. Do not put your confidence in the Son of Man. But dear Lord, we must put our confidence in God. And our eyes are upon you. With or without it, our eyes are upon you. And I pray, dear Lord, that you give our sister peace, dear Lord. Praise God. That the Lord is able to take care of her. He has done that all her life. And surely his hand is not crippled. He is not paralyzed. His hand is mighty in Isaiah 59 verses 1. The Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save. And his hair heavy that he cannot hear. Such is our God. Sister, we release some anxiety and fear. And be confident and walk in faith and victory. Father, we are also thankful for Laura. Amen. Sending happy birthday to her dear father, which will be tomorrow. Praise God. Blessings on this man. Thank you, dear Lord, for him, dear father, that he will have a great day with his family celebrating birthday, his birthday. And all those that will be celebrating today, dear Lord, and our members this week, dear father, bless them and we really thank you for them. Continue to sustain our people at our times. Continue, Lord, to grow the church. Our eyes upon you. You said, I will be it. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Nothing, nobody, no demon, no man can prevail against the church. It is the church of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Bless our nation and our country. And bring us out, uh, Lord, of this um, place that we are in. Remembering, too, that you have a reason. Because Joseph was in prison. But you are the reason why he was there. Amen. Hallelujah. It took God for the good. And Lord, we just trust in you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. As Anna come and wrap us up now. Glory to God. This evening at 6 will be our second live for the day. So this has been a powerful word only for this morning. Glory to God. Next week, uh, should the Lord have your power praise will be concluding. Hallelujah. So I want you to share this uh, uh, with somebody right now. Go press that button. Share. Share with everybody that you want because this is a dynamic message. The world needs to know this. Praise the name of the Lord. And see you later on our live. Amen. 6 minutes.